Many, as we know, insist that life is not a mysterious force. But is this true, might we wonder? Think about the smallest living system, something halfway between the living and the dead, a picoRNA virus. It's just a tiny mass of RNA in a protein shell. Is it simply complex chemistry? Or in its design, do we find the shadow of a vast unknown? Many say life is so complex we can't answer this question. But today, we know a lot. In fact, we know the structure of the pico-RNA virus down to its every atom. This molecular view shows its shell made of 240 beautifully coiled protein strands. And cutting away the shell, we find a single long RNA strand containing 11 genes. To answer our question, let's consider its construction in detail. Like DNA, RNA carries the design of the protein strands. And RNA is almost identical to DNA. It looks like the unpaired DNA strand we see in the Strewberry animation. Each tiny lump is an atom. Each atom is a fuzzy field of electromagnetic force. We see how the two DNA strands naturally stick together like a magnetic zipper. So we can think of RNA as one half of a magnetic zipper. In other words, it wants to bind to itself and other strands. The zipper-like teeth are nucleotides. The RNA strand of the pico-RNA vi virus has 8,000 teeth or nucleotides. That's pretty long. To get a true sense of what's going on, let's enlarge the virus by one million times. Now it's three centimeters across. Its RNA strand becomes a thin half zipper, two and a half meters, or eight feet in length. That's a lot to keep untangled. If we ball up, up the strand, we find it has to be coiled tight to fit inside its shell, called the capsid. Now, let's see how a virus becomes constructed. The virus locks onto a cell's membrane and is pulled inside. There, the virus shell breaks open and releases the RNA strand. It unwinds and floats free. Here, construction of new viruses begins. Returning to Barry's animation, we see the blue ribosome lock onto the RNA, our magnetic zipper. Our virus's RNA would be considerably longer than the yellow strand we see. And we do not see the thick soup of other molecules that would be in the cell fluid. To build the virus, shell, and other protein strands, little triangles bring individual amino acids to the ribosome. These tRNAs lock into the teeth of the RNA's magnetic zipper. As the ribosome moves down the virus's long RNA strand, 2,200 amino acids are assembled into one very long strand that contains all the virus's 11 proteins. The red strand is just the beginning of this long strand. 60 of these long strands are needed for each new virus. Once completed, each of these long strands is cut into 11 segments. The first four segments from each of the 60 strands build the shell. Now, exactly how the shell is formed is a mystery. We know that the 240 freshly cut segments of the long strands intricately fold and assemble into a hollow sphere. And elsewhere, our long viral RNA magnetic zipper is duplicated. Then, somehow, the long RNA strands find the spheres, slither into them, and coil up tight. Within five to eight hours, an army of newly manufactured viruses erupt through the cell membrane to attack other cells. To consider the true complexity of this process, let's return to our model. We have the virus's RNA strand to scale on the left. We saw how it runs through the ribosome to produce the long protein strand, which is on the right. The protein is about one third the length of the RNA strand. Next. We need to cut this long protein strand into 11 segments, each with about 200 amino acids. The first four segments of each of the long strands build the shell. We model them with four colored strands. We need to remember actual protein strands are sticky, like RNA, not like this thread. My motions are consciously directed, but I end up with a very crude representation. I have little wads. 
But each of the virus's 240 sticky protein strands perfectly curl and assemble as a sear. It may look easy, but if you try, you'll find things want to end up a tangled mess, not the virus's perfect icosahedral shell. So what creates these elegant structures? Well, the standard answer is, like a necklace, the patterns of beads of a strand determine its three-dimensional structure. For example, the triangles that bring the amino acids to the ribosome are also made of RNA. These tRNAs have about 40 nucleotides. They curl in a defined shape. The nucleotides bind to each other, like teeth of a magnetic zipper. And the huge ribosome is also largely made of RNA. It's about the same size as a picoRNA virus. Its four long RNA strands have 7,000 teeth, or nucleotides. But the ribosome's RNA binds tightly to itself, an incredibly complex mass that includes 79 small protein strands seen in blue. So do the differences in nucleotide patterns really explain such radical differences? Here we see molecular diagrams of the three ways RNA strands act. We have the ribosome's hum huge mass of tightly coiled RNA. And then in the center, we have two small tRNAs sitting on the teeth of a short piece of the virus's long, free-floating RNA strand. Ribosomal RNA, tRNAs, viral RNA, it's all strands composed of the same four nucleotides. Remember, RNA is like a magnetic zipper. It's sticky. Yet the differences are staggering. The ribosomal RNA binds to itself in an incredibly intricate structure. Yet the virus's RNA strand with 8,000 nucleotides floats free in the cell without tangles. Why such differences for the same magnetic string? Well, science has something called the theory of emergence that says there's really nothing mysterious going on. It says that the vast complexity of living molecules explains this ever-organized behavior. But is, it, is this true? Can we test the theory? We need to remember that science only acknowledges the electromagnetic force as a grand director. This is the force we know as magnetism and static cling. Is this force sufficient to explain life's incredibly organized motion? Let's try a model with these magnetic balls. The balls can form intricate structures, but I need to push and pull them into position. Left to themselves, the balls just form a motionless lump. Of course, atoms are less tightly bound and they bounce about with thermal energy, and they form bonds at certain angles. But in the end, the RNA, the protein strands, and every other molecule in a cell are just, in fact, ribbons of electromagnetic balls. They are like sticky strips of scotch tape. But unlike scotch tape that quickly forms an inert tangle, long RNA and protein strands do not tangle. They do not form random jumbles. They remain separate strands until they are supposed to assemble. They move to where they need to be. And when they do fold, they do so with exquisite precision. Could we be facing a profound mystery that awaits recognition? Many might argue that the cause of life's rigid organization isn't important. Just use it. Modern medicine and biotechnology depend on life's predictable mechanical precision. But using the known forces of physics, it seems impossible to create a physical model for what occurs. Get out your own magnets and give it a try. You'll find that magnets are happiest as a motionless lump. They do not naturally dance towards ever-expanding complexity of structures or motion. Something new needs to be added to current understanding to explain this bizarre behavior. The organization of the pycoRNA virus is trivial compared to that of the human body. If a pycoRNA virus were the size of a basketball, a human would stand twice the height of the earth. That's very big. What directs life's massive organization? This is the mind-blowing mystery that awaits to be acknowledged and explored. This is the next vast frontier of human curiosity that we have not even begun to touch. 
In following this trail of mysteries, one readily moves up through levels of biological organization to the unexplained operation of the conscious mind and memory. For those interested in this quest, the book Mind, Memory, Time seeks to answer these questions with the theory of life and mind that moves biology deeply into the realm of modern physics.